Good morning everyone, welcome to the third GCSE lesson. This one is on Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, just to note, it would be good if you got a calculator. If you haven't got one, don't worry, but a calculator would be useful for this lesson. Uh, okay, hopefully the picture is not too dark, not a sunny today, but uh, just let me know if you've got any issues on the chat and I'll try and sort out the picture. Okay, right, we're going to start with our first lessons, our first uh, questions there, please. So, <laughs> in your books, in uh, your piece of paper, whiteboards, whatever you're using, just try and answer those six quick questions, please. The one at the bottom says, list all the factors of 12. It's a little bit off the TV. Okay, any problems, let me know in the chat, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> Please be careful with this one as well. I try to put questions on there at the start of the paper, the ones you should be getting right, but at the same time, the ones that people make lots of mistakes with.
If anyone needs any help as well, we're going to go through these in a few minutes and then we'll get on to the actual main part of the lesson, the Pythagoras. Okay, right, we're going to go through these first questions so we can get on the rest of the lesson. First one, what is 0.3 squared? So I'm sure you all know that 0.3 times 0.3 is what that means. That is going to be 0 0.09, okay, because we've got one, two decimal places there, we've got two there as well. Okay, question two. The area of the square is 36 centimetres. What is the perimeter? I think you need to draw a diagram for this one. So you draw yourself your diagram just so you know what you're talking about. So the area is 36, which means the perimeter you need to work out. But first we'll work out whatever you can about it. We know to find the area, we times those two sides together. So we're looking for a number because it's a square that all sides are equal that multiplies by itself to give you 36 which is 6, or the square root of 36. We can then work out the perimeter, which is 4 6 is all added together, 24 centimetres. Question 3, work out, that's what evaluate means, 8 to the power 0. I'm not going to go through why this is, but anything to the power 0 is always equal to 1. That is just a good one to remember. In a different lesson I might explain that, but all you need to know is anything to the power 0 is always 1. So I had an echo on my computer there. Right, uh, simplify this one here. So we've got 4x minus 3y minus 2x plus 6y. Take your x's. I'm squaring them off with the sign in front. So I know this is a negative 2x. So 4x take away 2x is 2x. Then I've got negative 3y plus 6y. If you're on negative 3, you go up 6 you're going to go up to positive 3y and leave your answer like that. Mean of those numbers there, the mean is where you add them together and divide by how many there are, sharing all that equally. So if you add all those numbers up together, you get 18, 19, 26, 40. Then divide by how many numbers there are, which is 5, which gives you a mean of 8. And finally, the factors of 12. When you are doing factors, do them in Pairs. Factors are numbers that go into 12. They are numbers that multiply to make 12. So if you do them in pairs, we are looking at for 12, we've got 1 and 12, we've got 2 and 6, and we've got 3 and 4. Okay, you only need to do a factor tree if it says prime factors. There's no need to do it for factor or multiple questions. Okay, hopefully they're all okay. Any problems with those, please ask me. I'll try and explain some of them a bit better. Right, uh, just a note, if it does shut off filming suddenly, it seems to be doing it in about 50 minutes. I think my phone's falling asleep. I'm going to try and remember to wake it up. Otherwise, I'll just start a new live video straight away. Okay, on to Pythagoras. So, Pythagoras' theorem, two main things you need to do is use the rule of Pythagoras to find missing sides on right angle triangles and also use the rule in more complicated problems. More often than not now, it does not just give you a straightforward triangle and it says to use Pythagoras. It'll be hidden in another problem. So we're gonna look at some of those so you know when to use it. It's also creeping up on the non-calculated paper as well. But just before we start, I wanna check, sure, check you can round properly because a lot of these questions at the end, it says round, to one decimal place or round to three significant figures. I'm going to go through the first two on each one for you. So to round to one decimal place, we're looking at one number after the two. So we put our rounding line on there and we round to that number there. Because that's only a four afterwards, you look just at that digit. That does not round up, so that will go to 
3.2. Three significant figures. You label the figures 1, 2, 3, 4. So three significant figures is straight after the third one. So your line goes there. The 1 does not change the 5. So it's going to be 14.5. Okay, so can we just check two minutes, check we can round those properly to one decimal place and three significant figures, please? Okay. Okay, right, I think it's very important that each one has a specific colour. So one colour I will put in the middle of the diagram. Okay, it doesn't change it, but it's a pretty shade, but I think it's really important to pick a colour and look at colour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That could be my cheeky one pink. Pink for the one pink, okay, so yeah, yeah. so we've got two colours, and then I'm going to choose one of those cells to write that into the colour. Oh, what cells are you clicking? Pick your pencil name, okay? What? Yeah. No. Just trying to make the picture a bit uh, bigger and uh, brighter. Is that any better for people? Please let me know. Right, okay, so just quickly on to the rounding answers for those ones. Oops. So the answer is written down. Okay, so we had 3.2, 12.9, 14.5, because that 6 makes the 8 go up. We've got 8. 0.9 for that one, and we've got 6.2. Just for those in here who might show the better, so 3.2, 12.9, 8.9, and 6.2. These ones here, we've got 14.5, 6.5, uh, sorry. 6.5, 6, the value line is going to go, 6.45, 12.5, 14.5, 8.9, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.
if you've been taught this before and you've forgotten what to do, which doesn't involve really any algebra or anything like that, it just involves drawing squares to remind you what to do. So, first example on the board here, if I've got one triangle there, okay, and I say that I've got a missing length which is called x, I then say I've got two other lengths, six centimetres, so the question says to find x. Before I start, I'm going to start drawing some squares. Now I'm going to start with my hypotenuse, which is the longest side, and I'm going to draw a big square there. A big square, smaller squares on the other squares, the size is right, because this tells me this is a big size here. Now, as soon as I've drawn squares, I know it's to do with squaring the numbers. That reminds me of that. So 8 squared is 64. So about 64 in that one. 6 squared is 36. So I write a 36 in that one. And then the rule of Pythagoras is the two small squares add up to make the big square. So I know that two small squares equals the big square. That is my formula. It's not... A squared plus B squared plus C squared is the same formula you've probably been taught. That can get very confusing with trigonometry as well. That's all you need. Two small squares add to make the big square. So I add those two small squares together, which gives me 100, and I know my one mark for Pythagoras question. If the square is 100, I need to work out what the side was. So what number do you multiply to make 100? It is 10. So X equals 10 centimetres, and I've answered that question. Okay, just going to look at the other type now. So the other type is when you're finding a different side. So if I draw this triangle here, and I'm going to say this is 7 centimetres, this is 6 centimetres, and this time we're finding y. So I draw my squares in. One big square there for 7 and two small squares. You'll notice I've again put the big square on the biggest side. Not where y is, I'll put it on the biggest side because that's what it means, the big square. You then square your numbers, so 36 and 49. Now at this point, I still use the same rule, but I'm not adding those together because the small squares add up to make the big square. So it's what I add to 36 to get to 49, which is 13. Now, this will be in the calculator paper because to work out what number you multiply by itself to get to 13 is very difficult. So you use the square root button of 13, which gives you two, two, three significant figures, 3.61. So x equals 3.61 centimetres. Now, if you are using a different method for Pythagoras, that's absolutely fine as long as it works for you. So we're going to look at the questions on the board. If you haven't got a calculator, you can quite easily leave your answer like that for now. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so let's have a look at the questions on the board, some basic Pythagoras questions. Okay, there you go. Six questions to try and get on with. Question A, B, C, D, E and F. Any problems, let me know, please. And please use your calculators if you want. As I said, if you haven't, you can leave them as what's called thirds just in the square root form. Uh, some of you have heard this already, but so what we're doing is you draw, I'll just go through this question again. So the idea is to find the missing side, and the rule is these two small squares add up to the big square. You always draw the big square 
on the hypotenuse, the longest side. So the first thing you do is fill in your squares. Eight squared means eight times eight, which is 64. Six squared means six times six, which is 36. And then you can add those two together to make the big square. That's your first stage after you've done those. You add them together to give you 100. And then we are trying to work out what x is. So we say what number times us to make 100 by itself, or the square root of 100 is 10. So it's 10 centimetres for x. Same kind of question there. If there are any other questions, I will get you on the uh, chat down there. Right, I'll just put some step-by-step -step, uh, things for the first one there. The first question, please let me know if that helps or not. This is 
once you've got used to this technique, it's, it's really straightforward. It's just getting it in the first place. And as I said, I don't know what, slight, if you're using a slightly different method, it's fine, as long as you are using Pythagoras, because that's the only way to do it. I'll just go through the first one on the board, just to check you're on the right lines. Okay, so you've got your triangle there. We've got A, 6 centimetres and 9 centimetres. I draw my squares in. The big square will always be on the big side, opposite the right angle. So I've got a nice big square there, and I've got two smaller squares on the other sides. You then square the numbers you've got, so 6 times 6 is 36, you then do 9 times 9 which is 81, and then the rule is the two small squares add up to make the big square, so 36 and 81 is 117. Then to work out A, you're going to do the square root of 117, Okay, which is going to be about 10.8, uh, I imagine something like that, 10.8, 10.9. We'll go with 10.9, uh, I'm not sure, but the answer is going to come on the next slide. Okay, so it's about following the steps, getting the square you need, and then square rooting. Okay, you will not always be finding the big square, you might find the small square, like in this case, so you need to take away 36 and 49 to get the small square. Okay, hopefully we're all getting this now, uh, and then we'll give you the answers in a bit. Let me know if you finished as well, please.
Remember it says to leave your hand just to one decimal place as well. So think about the rounding we did in the bit just before. It's important just to get that last easy mark at the end. Well, they can take one away. We did all the hard work of the Pythagoras, the high level work, and then you figure out mark in your exams. And you've got to really get every mark you can. If you're looking for a grade four, a grade five, you need to be ruthless with the marks you're getting. Right, okay, uh, I'm going to give you the answers for these so we can look at some more problem solving style questions with these. Okay, uh, I will, if people want some more work on this as well, on the basic trial, I will upload a worksheet as well that you can have a go with the answers so you can check you're getting these correct. Just note on the last one, also these triangles, so those two sides are equal in an exam. You can't measure the length of it, they will never be drawn accurately. It will say diagrams not drawn accurately, so they are expecting you to use Pythagoras. Right, so the answers are as follows. Oh, 10.8, not 10.9, that's where we use calculators. So 10.8, 13.0, 13 is fine, there's no need to put the point zero. Uh, 7.2, 7.5 for that one, 10.8 for that one, and 8.5 for the isosceles triangle at the end. Okay, now this, the reason this was discovered or invented so long ago is because Finding these lengths of right angle triangles is actually a very important thing in society, in life, in construction, in all sorts. So you get a lot of problem solving questions to do with this, some real life ones as well. So we're going to look at a couple now and then I'm going to give you some exam questions to have a go at. So the first one we're going to go through together, and this is one of the times when I've used it in real life. Uh, I well, used to play rugby quite seriously, not so much anymore because I keep breaking myself. but. Uh, this is when I was playing at uh, Baylor Bloom in Lancaster and it was uh, fitness training and Stotty, who was a very mean coach who pushes very hard, he made us do 10 sprints across the diagonal of the pitch from A to C. So we went straight across the pitch from A to C there, okay? And he claimed this was only 100 meters, 1,000 meters worth of spin because he made us do it 10 times. So he said, because the length of the room pitch is 100 meters, he said, well, you're doing 100 meter sprints. I then piped up and said, well, sorry, it's not 100 meters for each spin, it's more than that because we're going across the hypotenuse of the rugby pitch rather than straight across. Everyone looked at me weirdly, but my point was still there that we were running too much distance. Okay, so I then, because I'm obviously a maths teacher and I also didn't want to run that far, I tried to work out the distance it actually was going across this rugby pitch. So we're going to do that question now. And the question I want to know is the nearest metre, how much more was the total distance than what he claimed it was? Okay, so these are the kind of questions you get in your GCSE, GCSE exam, you're using Pythagoras to solve some sort of real life situation. So I'm just interested in the triangle, so I'm just going to concentrate on my right angle triangle here. So I'm drawing the pitch, or half the pitch, I know this is 100 metres, I know this is A and B that I'm running between, and I know this is 70 metres. I'm going to find X, my distance. So the first thing I do is draw my squares in. So I know I've got a nice big square there because that's my hypotenuse, two small squares, and then I fill my squares in. Okay, so this square here, 100 squared is 
10,000. And this is going to be 70 times 70, which is 4,900. I know the two small squares add up to make the big square, which is going to be 14,900. And then I square root my answer to get my distance. So if I square root 14,900, I get an answer of 122.06 metres. Okay, right, in this case, uh, I want 10 of these lengths because I'm doing it 10 times. So I'm going to multiply this by 10 because it was 10 lengths, which gives me 1,220.6 or to the nearest metre, 1,221 metres. Okay, quite important, you don't round to early because otherwise you've only got 1,220. To be honest, they're, they're more slack with that now because it doesn't really matter. No one's bothered about that extra metre in most situations, but try not to round early anyway. So let, now let's answer the question. How much more was the total distance? So he said it was 1,000. It was actually 1,221. So the extra distance was 221 metres. Okay? So that's an example of a problem solving style question. The kind of thing you get is a very tough kind of grade five GCSE question. Maybe still grade four because it's just Pythagoras, but they are difficult. And lots of people are getting zero marks on this because they are not even thinking to use Pythagoras. You do not need to get all the marks on a question like this, but it would be nice if you were at least using Pythagoras and getting two marks for working out the length A to C. So that's where you need to train yourself to think, can I use Pythagoras to answer this question? Okay, uh, I'll take any more questions about that one now. I'm going to give you another GCC one to have a go at on the board now. So that actually fits in the last lesson as the kind of homework as well. I'll draw it a bit bigger because you might not be able to see that. So we've got this length here is 5 metres. This length here is 12 metres. Now the idea is to find the total weight of this metal frame. So we know all the lengths are those there. It says metal is 1.5 kilograms per metre. So I want you to find the total length of this frame. Now clearly, there is a missing length, this length here. So the first step on this is to find the length of that piece of wire. Then you can add it all up. Okay, this is actually a non-calculator question. I don't mind if you use a calculator. Let's just see if we can get some answers on this very tough question that a lot most people got zero marks on because they didn't even think to use Pythagoras. Okay, so let's see how you get on with that. I'll take any questions on the chat.
You see now the button for the square root and the calculator will look something like that. It might have an X in there, it might just be a square root button, but it will be that kind of tick box. That's what you do at the final stage of Pythagoras. You always square root to get your answer. Okay, this is a grade four plus topic. So it's a difficult topic, but it's one that is nearly always on the foundation paper each year. Right, okay, let's have a look at this one. So, the first thing to do is to work out this side here. Okay, I'll draw it on the uh, board up here. So you've got your wireframe there. This is five, this is five, this is 12. And the first thing we're gonna work at is that length. There. So it's a Pythagoras question. I'm going to draw out the triangle. That's my big square, little square, little square, and fill in the boxes. So this one here. This one here is 144, this one is 25, add those together you get 169. So I then square root that, the square root of 169 equals 13. So I know this length here is 13. I then add together all the lengths of my wireframe. So it's, uh, how about that? So 12, 12, 5 and 5 and 13 gives me 24, 34, 47 centimetres, 47 metres. So it's 47 metres. I then know it's 1.5 kilograms per metre. So I need to do 47 times 1.5, which is going to be 147 plus half of 47. So that's 47 plus half of 47, which is 23.5, gives me a total of 70.5 metres. Difficult question. 
okay, that you are using Pythagoras. The key point from this lesson, the main thing you need to be able to do is to make sure that if you have a triangle, you can work out the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, from the basic triangle. Where's the sweet? What? I didn't realise it was there. Come on. Oh, he's got it. Oh. Right, Yay. okay. Yay. So I put some exam questions on the chat, uh, not on the chat, just on the post before this one. Okay, there's three of them to have a go at. We can have a go at the first one on the board here. In fact, I'll draw it up here so it's a bit bigger. So this is the main one. If you can do this, if you could not do Pythagoras before, this is your first lesson of Pythagoras. If you can answer a question like this, absolutely fantastic. Okay, you've had a great lesson, you've done really, really well. So this question here, I'll make it bigger. It is on that sheet if any of you have got that. But it's the exact same question here. So we've got the flagpole, which is 3 metres long. This bit along the board is 1.2 metres. And you need to work out the length of the rope that supports the flag. So you are finding X there. You're finding that length. Okay, so last thing we're going to do, can you find the length of that rope on this past paper GCSE question and then there's some harder ones you'd have a go at yourselves. I will post all the answers with work solutions later in the day. Okay, so let's have a go at that and see who can get that one correct, please. It says leave your answer to two significant figures. So see if you can do that as well. So this would be a three mark GCSE question. So it should be taking you about three minutes in theory. So have a go at that and we'll go for this as the final thing of the lesson. If you have finished that one already, please. That's definitely 1.2 at the bottom as well, not 12, 1.2 metres. Uh, if you have finished that one as well, please have a go at the other two on that sheet that I've uh, attached to the, uh, to the page.
Okay, so we'll go through this, see if you've got the right answer. I'll show you how you get your marks as well. So first of all, draw your squares in. So small square, small square, and big square, really exaggerate that big square. So three squared is nine. 1.2 squared is 1.44. We then add the two small squares together to make the big square. So it's nine add 1.44 is 10.44. We then need to square root our answer. See, if you've got 10.44 written down somewhere, that gets you one mark. But just having 10.44 written, written down somewhere, you've got your mark. We then square root our answer. So the square root of 10.44 is going to give you... three point. 3.231099 and so on and it says to two significant figures so one two so I round to there so my answer is 3.2 meters the rope holding the flag up is 3.2 meters okay right, I appreciate this is a difficult topic much harder than the last two lessons we've done it's one that's on the GCSE syllabus one that a lot of you might not have covered yet because it tends to be one you do towards the end, close to the exam, and unfortunately schools are shut. So I didn't want to try and cover something new for some of you. Okay, I will stay on the chat for a bit. If anyone's got any problems with any of this, please have a go at the other questions I've uploaded for you. Uh, I will put the other questions back on the board with the answers as well if you want to have some practice at the easier ones. So I'll leave those up for a bit. So you can have a go at those and I'll help you with any of the questions you want to at all. Okay, thank you very much. I hope it was useful. Please keep doing some maths, keep doing some work, but at the same time, you know, look after yourselves. Okay, bye.
Okay, gonna switch the camera off. Well done everyone. Today, tough lesson, and we will be doing some inequalities on Thursday. Lots of different levels on that one, uh, going from kind of the kind of thing you'd be taught in year eight, or even year seven, all the way up to GCSE. So looking at inequalities, that will be on Thursday. Okay, see you later.